everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you probably know, I've been in Fiji for a couple of months now, so I decided to make this video to let you know a few things in Fiji that I find really interesting or things that I think that you should definitely take note of. So the first thing, when you're traveling around Fiji, the buses are extremely cheap. You can get a bus card at any accredited Vodafone outlet and top up your amounts at any kiosk or any Vodafone outlet. As for the taxis, they're very, very cheap, a little bit more than the buses, but still very, very cheap. And I find they're cheaper in Suva, in the central division of Fiji, and more expensive up in the western, but still very cheap. In Suva, it was like less than $10 to go around pretty much anywhere around the city. There's no Uber service or Lyft service in Fiji, but as I said, the taxis are very cheap, so might as well just take a taxi. A very common socio-cultural practice in Fiji is tea time. Tea time takes place at schools, at events, social gatherings, and just at home. Fijians love their sweets at tea time. They usually eat crackers, breads, some other homemade sweets, and to top it all off, drink the classic British black tea. And I find that a lot of Fijians add powdered milk to their black tea to make it a milk tea. It's something that often happens about twice a day, morning tea and afternoon tea, and lunch is always around 1 p.m. So the morning tea happens, then there's 1 p.m. lunch, and then afternoon tea, usually around 3 or 4 p.m. And conceivably, I believe that this practice was introduced to Fijians during um, British colonization, and that was from, what year was that? 1874 to 1970. This next one is for all of my frizzy or curly, long-haired travelers. Do not, I repeat, do not expect to use heat to straighten or process your hair as soon as you get outside, it's going to become a big poof ball and frizz up. I kid you not. As you know, Fiji is very humid, tropical climate, so that's just one expectation that you should have when coming to Fiji. Another suggestion I have is to perhaps, if you plan on cutting your hair short through sometime in the year, do it before you go to Fiji because it'll be much more easy to manage as this kind of long hair, no, it's no fun. <laughs> Expect to have your hair tied up most of the time that you're here in Fiji. But see, it's okay, I'm indoors right now and I'm facing the outside, the, the breeze is coming in and already frizzing up my hair, but at least I'm indoors so it's not too bad. <laughs> and here's a little tip for managing the heat. So I, this is just a personal thing that I've noticed in my time spent here. I find that if you use body lotions, especially the heavy body butters, you tend to sweat quite immense it, yeah. I want to say the word astro astronomically <laughs> but <laughs> you get the point um, if you use creams in these areas you're going to sweat especially your back so I try to avoid these areas when I put cream on after a shower and I just put it on areas if I shave those areas but um, I don't use heavy creams anymore and I've actually started to use um, Sorry, there's mosquitoes coming in now. But I've actually started to use this rose toner, and I find that this works pretty well to moisturize, keep the skin hydrated without having that like heavy layer on top, causing you to sweat. So that's just a little advice. So as for bugs and insects, creepy crawlies, there aren't any super dangerous or any deadly bugs here in Fiji. Probably the most dangerous thing would be dengue from mosquitoes, which outbreaks do happen sometimes. Just be aware of if there's a dengue outbreak when you're there or before you're about to arrive. I never had any issues with that. But I do have to say that the scariest creatures that I've seen in Fiji are the cockroaches. 
They are pretty large and they do have wings, but fortunately they only come out at night, so it's not something that's always on my mind and for being a fear in fear. They're about like they're a pretty good size. And yeah, just make sure to keep the place around you clean. But even sometimes that doesn't really do much, so eh, just be ready for that. When coming to Fiji, be prepared to eat a lot of carbs. Culturally, bread and sweets were introduced into Fiji around 1879 when the Indians were taken to Fiji as slaves by the British and were given work on the sugar plantations. So that's kind of where the beginning of all of the sweets in Fiji began and now it's a common thing to eat during tea time as I mentioned before but for you travelers expect <laughs> to gain some weight when you come to Fiji if you are going to be eating as the locals do and that does explain the maybe like uh, five to ten pounds that I have gained over the few months that I've been here <laughs> already so. also the best bread that I think is available is by the Hot Bread Kitchen and they have a big variety of different breads like sliced bread, they have scones, um, they have something with meat inside, there's like muffins and different types of little cakes, nothing too fancy but more like the loaf type of cakes but something that I really really love is their scones. Oh, fresh scones in Fiji, oh my goodness, with some jam and butter. It's the best thing for tea time. And maybe that is what contributed to my bit of weight gain. <laughs> oh well, it's life. Markets in Fiji are plentiful and rich in fruits and veggies and even meats too. There's also handicraft market. You can find the biggest fresh markets in Nandi, Lautoka, and in Suva. And also the rock market in Suva. You can probably Google some of these to see the bigger markets. And you can get a lot of items that people make themselves, um, even food people make themselves. And these handicraft markets are really good for if you want to buy some souvenirs to bring back home for your family and friends. Yeah, I suggest that if you're buying produce, definitely buy it at any of the markets that you see along the streets or the bigger markets um, rather than the grocery store because they're locally grown, organic, fresh, comes from the farms of Fiji and you're supporting the local economy with that purchase. Um, also, I did, I did want to add that Fiji has banned the manufacture, sale and use of plastic bags countrywide. So if you go to any market, any grocery store, they'll give you a reusable bag. And I also found that in one of the markets when I first arrived in Fiji, the Suva market, the really big one, there were these little stands in the back of the market and they were selling some handicraft items. So I found this really cute bag, reusable bag, that I use pretty much every single day for everything. Um, it has flower pattern on the outside. I believe it's made of canvas. And the way it's sewed is like really, really well done. So it can hold a lot of stuff like my laptop and when I get groceries, all my groceries, because it's pretty, it's pretty, um, what's that word? It can fit a lot of things in there. <laughs> so I highly suggest purchasing things from these local markets. As I said, it's all handmade, it's um, locally produced, and so it's helping the local economy uh, much better than going to these like big, you know, corporations and things like that. safety in Fiji. In the daytime it's relatively very safe besides the you know common pickpocketer or two in the tourist areas but if you stay in your resort I'm sure there's no problem. And let's talk about the nighttime. So at night it can be a bit dangerous. Um, there have been issues and reports on people getting mugged. So it's suggested for people to travel in bigger groups or to just take a taxi at night to avoid the potential of being 
uh, mugged. Something else to keep in mind is that internet and data service can be quite spotty and slow. There have been times where I'm going up to the mountains and the data is completely gone and other times where I'm just sitting at home and then the data gets so slow that I can't even load anything and this can happen for like a couple of hours. It might be because of where I'm actually staying or it might be all around Fiji, I don't really know. Actually I did do a little poll on my Instagram asking people if they found that it, um, internet spotty all around Fiji and I got kind of like a 50-50 answer that it's spotty everywhere or it's just my personal <laughs> so I really don't know so you can get data and internet through um, the two largest com phone companies Vodafone and Digicel um, for me personally I use Vodafone and the most feasible option for me was to get one of their plans where I spend $50 for data for the month um, 50 Fijian dollars and I get 50 gigabytes a month and they actually include another 50 so in reality I get 100 gigabytes for the entire month and that's a good amount for me I know some people may use less but that was the best plan for me anything less I would go over and then my data would get cut and with these 100 gigs as I said this was a good amount for me and this is because I also use it for my computer so I just hotspot my phone to my computer and then I'm able to use the internet, watch Netflix, browse, do some work, study, you know, all the good stuff. TikTok, YouTube. <laughs> also something to take note is that about one Netflix movie is about one gigabyte. So just keep that in mind. Don't just watch a marathon of Netflix. I suggest actually that to download some Netflix before going on your trip or download some movies onto your computer so that you don't have to use all your data, get more data. Because the system for having data, it is a little bit like, it's more about topping up, getting more data, adding more, adding more, adding more, and it's a little bit annoying for me. Um, with Vodafone, they do have the mobile money app, so you can do it on your phone. I haven't actually used it yet, but I probably should. It might be easier. But And they do have a texting option with the mobile money, so you can just text a couple little digits and get more money. I don't know, for me it's a bit confusing, so I just like to go one month, pay one price, you're good. So another thing that I want to talk about is that Everything in Fiji runs on Fiji time. Unlike places in the West or like Japan where they expect you to be on time or even earlier than the projected time, Fiji time, you can be pretty late for things. I'm not telling you be late for things. I'm just saying that there, there's a lot of times where things are scheduled for a certain time and not everyone shows up until maybe 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, I don't know. Stick to how you normally do things, just to um, be safe. Personally, I'm late for everything, so this is kind of an advantage to, for me, as I show up on my regular time, and that's when everyone else shows up as well, so. Fiji time, it really means, it's just a way to express how Fijians live in a more relaxed, easygoing, free lifestyle, they're not rush, rush, rush everywhere, hurry everywhere, they take their time, go with the flow, just, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I love Fiji so much, is that all of your worries can just, so something else to keep in mind is considering that Fiji is rich in culture and religion. One thing that I do notice is there's a certain way of dress that Fijians have and it's a bit more modest than you would find in the West. So I find that um, a lot of people don't wear clothes above the knees, as in short shorts or short skirts, short dresses, but um, tank tops seem to be okay. Um, mostly though, I do find people wearing the sleeve tops and the, the shorts 
It's like a common casual outfit. It's even common for Fijians to wear the clothes into the water, like the pool in the ocean. But if you're a traveler, it's okay for you to wear your two-piece swimsuit or your one-piece swimsuit. But it is better for the, you, you travelers to wear your bikinis and those kind of outfits in the resorts, not really in the cities or in public areas. Sorry. So be mindful when you're going to events and into town with what you decide to wear. And especially in villages where you should wear a sarong for the ladies or a sulu, which is a type of dress for both men and women and all genders. And last, but definitely not least, probably most, if we're putting this in order, grog ceremonies. Grog, or commonly known as kava, is a traditional drink that is a ceremonial drink made from the cassava root, and it has quite of a bitter taste to it, and gives you a mild numbness in your mouth. And it's actually a mild narcotic and sedative, so you will feel really relaxed and calm after having one of these ceremonies. These ceremonies can last for hours and hours on end, just to let you know. So if you are uncomfortable with the idea of drinking, um, then just say one or two and then get going with whatever you're doing. <laughs> for the ceremony, if you're a visitor, if you're a guest, then you're expected to bring some grog root, like kava root, to the ceremony and then the um, host will serve you the kava and they mix it in this bowl. So when they serve you the bowl of the kava drink, you're expected to clap once and say bula to everyone as a greeting. Um, and then you're expected to drink the bowl of kava in one big gulp if you can or in a couple gulps if you need to and then you have to clap three times and say mata and pass it back. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So in the cities grog is commonly done with friends, family, any type of social gathering, event, any special, any anything, literally anything. You can have any reason to do grog. And in the villages, it's also done for um, disagreements as a peaceful kind of offering from another village. Grog is a hugely important part of Fijian culture, and it is filled with laughs, conversations, and a lot. It's a lot of fun. That's all I can say. I really suggest that you take part in at least one grog ceremony in your time in Fiji, as it's a very special culturally important part of Fiji and you're really really going to enjoy it. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something and if you travelers are coming to Fiji make sure to watch my other vlogs that I have on here so that you can um, see a little bit about my experience and know what to expect when coming and yeah that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe, click my links down below for my TikTok, my Instagram. And the way that you say bye in Fijian, you say mode. So mode everyone, bye bye. Sorry, these mosquitoes are attacking me. <laughs> um.